you don't seem like the guy that's uh, the president of the United States' son would just go to to kind of fix an everyday laptop. Especially considering some of the sensitive work he did, you would think that there would be somebody that is at least associated with the government would be work doing that work and not a, a, a retail store or whatever, right? Correct. Were you surprised? Well, you got to figure, uh, you know, this was two weeks before his father announced his candidacy. I didn't think Joe was going to run, mm. to be honest, and nor did I really pay that much attention. Uh, and initially, when I saw the Bo Biden sticker on one of the three laptops, my initial thoughts were, like many customers, they bring in a deceased loved one's laptop or digital device. They just want the memories off of it because Hunter didn't want to repair. He came in. He wanted the data recovered. And that's what the paperwork was filled out, and he agreed to the conditions and terms. And mm -hmm. and that's where my fear stemmed from, was he was in possession of a piece of paper that clearly said I was allowed to go through and recover his data from these devices. Mm. And I assumed that he had his own IT people, but you know, I did have a five-star rating, so it wasn't out of the realm of possibility that somebody would want to take their device to me. Fair enough. I've dealt with famous people in the past uh, without issue, but then again, they didn't have nearly as that level of criminality on yeah. the laptop. And you, uh, you're in Rhode Island too, so I can't imagine there's nearly as many uh, celebrities. Like stores. Yeah. Well, I mean stores. There's not a whole lot of options if you're trying to go. It's either the Geek Squad at Best Buy or some, like a, a mom and pop shop like yours. Yeah, right? there's not a lot of options anywhere because I, I've actually taken in my laptop quite a few <laughs> times to a local place in Wilmington, North Carolina. And when I checked in, by the way, jokingly <laughs> I had said, because everything is in the cloud, I go, look, just know if you find any nudes on here, they're mine. And I told this story, and this is no lie, I told this story on the show three or four years ago when I had taken it in. Everybody got a big chuckle out of it, but at least it was a, a, a way to break the ice. And you are giving something to someone who you don't know, who, let's face it, I, I can't name another device or anything that I use in real life besides maybe a phone that would have all your person, personal data on it. And now that I think about it, uh, even your, your, your probably your backup to your phone is, is all on your computer, if I would you, assume. If you're using two Apple devices, certainly. Correct, yeah. yeah. Or, or at least some way to access that information would be on your laptop. Uh, yeah, that, that presents a call. There's a couple of questions that a lot of people have asked us knowing that you were coming on the show. One, one of them is, um, how long did you have the laptop? Like, it was lapsed. He didn't come pay for it or pick his shit up. And by the way, you said three laptops. So there's three of these things? Well, he came in with three. And mm -hmm. my shop's in Wilmington, Delaware. So it's a little bit, I think, better than uh, Rhode Island. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, well. Yeah, we're, we're a suburb of Philadelphia. So it's okay. Kinda, you know, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Got nice. Um, he came in with three laptops. One was a complete write-off. I gave it back to him. It was just beyond mm -hmm. anything that I could recover data from. The second one, he just had some inoperable keys, and I felt bad for the guy, so I gave, let him borrow a keyboard. I guess I gave him a keyboard in retrospect, uh, and then uh, so he could facilitate his own recovery. And then the third one is the one that I checked in that needed a little bit more. It was, it was suffering from a power issue due to liquid damage, so I could recover manually by dragging and dropping files mm -hmm. until it shut down. Then I'd have to charge it and then manually recover files, and it would shut down. And this process took about eight or nine hours. And it's during that process that I realized that this was not Bo Biden's laptop, that this was, in fact, Hunter's, mm. and it was gross. And how long did you have it in your possession before, uh, like, you? I, I, at some point, you, I assume you contacted him and said, hey, you need to come pay for this and grab your shit. You owe me money or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And how Well, I know, his, I know his phone was working. I called him up <clears throat> when the data recovery was complete on the 15th of April, I called him up and left a message that he needed to pick up from uh, like a Best Buy an external hard drive so I could transfer the data that I recovered back, the 220 gigs I recovered. Mm -hmm. uh, he showed up in the shop on the 16th in the evening and dropped off a drive. So I know he was getting his voicemails. Uh, then he requested that I pay him uh, electronically through Square. So I sent an automated Square request payment for 85 bucks and uh, called him the next day to let him know everything was ready. The payment was sent on the 17th. Uh, I called him again a couple weeks later at the end of the month, a uh, couple weeks after that. Uh, no response, never came in. I started to get more and more nervous as Joe was getting more and more popular in the, in the polls. I just figured it was a matter of time before somebody was going to come in looking for that laptop. And uh, I, that's why when after 90 days, it became my property. So about mid-July, I, uh, I did a deep dive on the laptop to 
make sure the criminality that I had witnessed, and I'm not talking just about a guy smoking crack with a gun. I'm talking about the, the ex a lot of money exchanging hands and going back and forth. So uh, that's when I made the determination that this needed to get to the FBI. So <clears throat> wait, what? so nobody from the government ever reached out to you until you reached out to them, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, because they would have no way of knowing. Um, but but to you, when you're asked to recover data on well, a, they wait. On a they computer. they would know if Hunter Biden had the self awareness to say because there were. This is why I asked this question. There were multiple steps. First, he drops off the laptop. Mm -hmm. Then he knows that uh, John Paul is removing files from it, buys an external hard drive, drops it off again, and then pays later. There's like all these steps. At any point, Hunter Biden could have alerted his dad or the FBI or somebody like, hey, there might be some compromising material over here. I'm just establishing the fact that this guy was completely out of his mind. Or the fact that he just <laughs> genuinely didn't know. Uh, because I, I find it wait, hard wait, to believe genuinely didn't know what genuinely didn't know what was exactly <laughs> on this laptop and all the transactions that had gone on. Because as this story has played out over the last three years, the biggest question I have is, is this guy just a fucking moron in Hunter Biden? Or did he just genuinely not know what was on this laptop? It's one there's, of the two. There's no way you don't know that there are emails that you sent on your laptop. That's not, that's, that's a completely unbelievable thing. Now that's what I think. No, that's the, that's if, if look, I mean, crack is a hell of a drug. It is. <laughs> right. So, I so guess. is it, but is it drug use? Is it, you know what I'm saying? Like, how could you be that dumb? Um, or, or are you just too deep in the drugs that it's like, Hey man, this is just another, you know, I work a nine to five J O B and I'm going down the yeah. street to drop off my laptop and that's it. I'll come and pick it up and, no harm, no foul. Well, I guess we've you've interacted with him, John Paul. What do you think about that? What's your why do you think he was so, I guess, cavalier or or perhaps uh, myopic or just stupid about it, this whole process? Yeah. Well, I I don't like to speculate. I can just go off of the condition that he was in when he came into my shop both times. He was intoxicated. Um, mm. The second time he was definitely more jittery and more wired. Um I don't I think he was he seemed like he was in a good state of mind to understand and comprehend the process and everything I explained to him. So I don't I don't see that it was he, I think he's had a lot of practice being in a drug haze. So I don't think that it was drug use that caused him to forget. A lot of times I, I wonder if this wasn't him just in, in some way la uh, lashing out at his father or, mm. or trying to come clean subconsciously, knowing that he threw a wrench and whatever. I, I have no idea. And all I know is, is that he's, he's had something like 26 electronic devices since 2010. And if he's left one with a, a doctor's office, a psychiatrist in Massachusetts, he's, thinks another one was stolen by some Russians in 2018. He's got the three that he brought into my shop that were all liquid damaged. I mean, we're talking probably about $6,000 worth of computer hardware that were just liquid damaged. Mm. I mean, this is, he, he seems to be very rough and irresponsible with electronics. But if, if you have the money to afford it, then I guess you don't care. I suppose, but exposing yourself to criminal prosecution is, is, a, is wholly different than you know, just losing a couple thousand bucks on a computer. But yeah, you that's an interesting theory, I guess, that like th th this is how most serial killers get caught. They want to, it's either a pride or guilt thing. Yeah. They, they want to show off how clever they are or the weight of the guilt is too much on them and they have finally, like, even if it's subconsciously exposed themselves. Yeah, and the, and the reason I go back to the uh, <clears throat> did he not know and is he just dumb part is, you know, when we covered 90% of these crimes, it's usually the dumbest people committing mm. them where you're just like, oh, they're just stupid people. Uh, now, for you personally, John, when you take on a computer like this and your your only job is to recover data off of it, what made you look inside and say, OK, I, I know that there's criminal activity going on in here? Because if you if you hadn't gone in and looked at some of the documents or files or uh, or, or transactions uh, what was what was there that made you actually either hunt inside this thing to look for it, or was it just on the surface and, and literally just sitting in tabs? Like, what was it exactly? So normally, if I'm doing a data recovery and the machine is healthy and able to power on, I would never look at the data. It would I would just go into a program and I would 
scan the drive, do a forensic clone or a block copy of the drive and verify that everything, all the ones and zeros went over. And then I would charge the customer. Mm. Uh, this was not the case. I had to, you know, again, manually go in there and start with the desktop and drag and drop. And then if the thing shut down on me, I'd have to open up both windows once it got powered up again, kind of compare folders side by side. And it's during that comparison process when I'm looking out and, and seeing, does this document open up? Is this document, this was tourniqueted during the transfer. So this can't open up. I have to manually drag that file back. And it was a bunch of touch and goes. And it's during that process that I saw a lot of the porn, but I also, one document really stood out and it was, I was verifying data in the documents folder. There was a file called income.pdf and it had a purple dot. So the, he's, I've obviously identified this file as some importance because he gave it a specific color marking and it kind of stood out because none, none of the other files had. So I opened it up just to verify it. And that's when I saw uh, he his accountant explaining how he, they're not going to report the $2.5 million from Burisma. Uh, obviously, you can't live off of $550,000 a year. So we're going to borrow your some money from Bohan Harvest. And, you know, it's just it, it kind of it, it struck me as really odd. But again, his dad wasn't running for president. This was a job. I kind of underbid it because I felt bad for the guy thinking it was his dead brother's computer. And I was regretting it. Uh, only charge him 85 bucks and he never paid for it. I sent him the bill repeatedly, never paid. So I don't, again, I don't understand why his phone was working and his voicemail was working on the, on the 15th of April. And he, after that, he never called never returned his call. Uh, and so at that point, uh, in, as far as your contract goes, are you legally allowed to uh, keep possession of the laptop until there is some well, form of payments? Yeah, after 90 days uh, on the contract that all my customers sign, and yep. I explain at length that we're not liable. And after 90 days, if you don't come in and, and pay for your product, uh, then it's forfeit. 